of itself. That's the soul level. You, therefore, you are true love. You are pure love. You are true light. You are pure light. That's why they call it a trinity, spirit and soul in the mammalian species. That being human, you know, the hue, the ancient sound of creator in the mammalian species. Now, what would it be like, just for clarity, to no longer have that magnetic little pinball over here throwing one journey, partridge family, whatever, whatever on the magic bus, to have all that dissolved. We're no longer our tunnel vision. We're no longer in a pinpoint of expression. Many want to know, what's my mission? Well, I said, I'm hoping you don't have one because that goes back to the karmic grid system. Yeah. Now, who are you? Not with your mom's voice, not with dad's voice, not with society's voice, not with the church's voice, not with Tom Sawyer's voice, not with any voices except you. Now we're stepping it up. We're arising into love, not falling into emotion, which is most often misinterpreted as love. You don't fall in love, you arise to love. Yeah, beautiful. You fall into emotion. Welcome to the Inner Sanctum online group sessions with Karen Swain. This recording is some highlights from our two to three hour online sessions where I teach deliberate creation each week and once and sometimes twice a month we invite a guest teacher to share their wisdom and their work and we can quiz them and we have a lovely time. Enjoy the highlights and if you'd like to join us please go to karenswain.com slash inner sanctum and sign up. <laughs> let's, let's get this show, show on the road. We've got a couple of people that oh, have We just... already started. This was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're recording now. So let me introduce, welcome to the inner sanctum, William. So thank you so much for gracing us today with your presence and coming to meet the little tribe. Well, this is awesome. So thank you so much, Karen. This is such an awesome and such a privilege and such a blast. <laughs> thank you. You're always having fun. Let me tell people who haven't watched the show I did with William. How long ago was it? A few months ago we did the show, six months ago? Yeah, yeah. About six months ago. Yeah. And as I said on the show, I've known about you for years and you kind of confuse me and delight me all at the same time. And then I, after having you on the show, I call you the real K-Pax. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that movie, William? I okay. loved it. Someone yeah. showed it to me years ago when I was renting floor space from them. This is you. You're the real KPAX. William Linville is a divine presence of clear creator consciousness who has transcended all the lower levels of physical form, as well as all the survival levels of physical makeup that come with the embodiment, which he stepped into on a surgery table in 1996. He spent many lives in Sirius Constellation and is here on earth to help humanity let go of the limiting programs and fears that have been holding us back from the consciousness evolution as a collective civilization. We spoke about on the show, the journey, your journey to earth on the show last time, who you are, uh, why you came here and how you had to pass through the veil of forgetfulness like all of us do as you come in as a higher consciousness being into a physical form and density. You still have to wake up, which I, I found really fascinating actually, and, um, and how, to transcend, how to transcend limitation. If people want to see the show and also we were just talking about Mike is, uh, what's Mike's last name, William? Connell. Mike Connell and you do a podcast every week on your. On oh, your... probably. Yeah, we post them um, pretty frequently, but I think we like, I, I'll be recording this week, last week. So pretty much weekly, we do a recording, then we send it, get it edited, and then he posts it. And what it's do you chat probably... about on your podcast? Do you just kind of chat, 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 chat away? What do you talk there's about? A, there's always a topic. Like we did one for. It's called the relevance of the now. We did one about death, deterioration. We've done one about manifesting, one about relationships. And it, we always make sure it's focused on, you know, from political climate, global, earth. Um, we make sure it's something relevant mm -hmm. that people are running through within themselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we pick topics that, are always actually Michael does usually, and then I say yay or nay. Um, 
he we pick things that are going on in people's lives. We we all the way to letting go of loved ones or whatever it may be, relationships are basically things that don't work for you, but then the welcoming in of the new. And there's other ones we do about connecting with your entourage. The yeah. angelic angelic ascended host realms and things that we find that dear ones in this climate, like you look at global, you look at the matrixes, the shifts and changes in the matrixes on the planet, and then the celestial levels, a mass collective. So we look at things like that, that my, the way I work is that anywhere from a janitor to a CEO can understand. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So as I say, we've got no agenda or topic today, but as you're speaking, I'm thinking about you were talking about uh, moving around sort of to be there for the transitioning of your of your angel as you call her your wife's yeah, yeah. parents and now her sister and this is something that uh, this is you know the death topic is a lot we talk about the death topic a lot on my show and a few years yeah. back I was talking to another spiritual teacher and he would had five NDEs and uh, I thought I wonder why is the NDE and the death topic so big in the consciousness arena at the moment. And then I thought there's going to be a lot of death in our future. And I'm kind of seeing that now. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. I mean, over this past week, I was kind of chuckling to myself. I mean, with compassion, but it's like, okay, we did a movie years ago called Awaken. And now I think it's called Awaken Soul to Soul. And the llama that was in the movie, not the animal, but a, a llama, rinpoche, or ring, I don't know, whatever you call those things. Rim, but, rinpoche, a rinpoche. That's what it is. Yeah, I was thinking ricochet, you know, but <laughs> he didn't come across that way. And yeah, it was a good friend of ours. He left on November 1st. He left the planet. He was okay. like 40-ish, which is uh-huh. kind of interesting. Another dear one last week or the week before and she a very awakened enlightened soul and she decided just i'm ready to go another one over here two days ago that said okay you know i've gone as far as i can and i'm not i don't want to stay here and experience a new paradigm in this body so he left the planet he checked out stepped out left the planet and then a few others phasing in phasing out and then goodbye 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 and the whole point is that the new energy is coming in so powerfully, so potently, that to hold on to an old way, it's not, and I want to stop right here for a minute. I want to make sure everyone's clear. It's not by default, even cognitively. It, it's also not by punishment. It's that you, as your higher levels, are saying, look, I'm having a lot of trouble getting my own attention this time around. I'm having trouble opening up, waking up, and getting to a point along and within my journey right now, that is it's going to be a lot easier rather than clearing out all this old energy. It'll be a lot, lot easier to be able to come in, come forth, come through with more and more ease and grace. If I drop the body, pick up the body as an indigo, a crystalline offspring, a rainbow offspring, and there's all this diamond stuff and all that fun stuff, but that's a whole nother story. But, you know, where they're coming in with the next evolutionary cycle for brother humanity, being that of the involvement of brother humanity, all the way through the DNA, the RNA, youth vitality chromosomes, the telomere, where they're coming in now with not so many shadow sides, because there was leaving the planet front, you know, front, back, sideways, whatever, whatever. And they're making a full transition because the karmic lattice work that's been gone since around 87 ish, close to 88. That's been resolved and dissolved. The harmonic convergence when the planetary constellation of um, the basically the asteroid belt of Merva was going to hit the planet for the eighth time, another ending of humanity. But humanity said, you know what? Hey, we do the harmonic convergence, the measurements. Humanity was far, far enough along their journey of waking up that the asteroid belt ended up going passing the planet without you know creating devastation which had everything to do with you your light realms your light bodies coming in coming through and also the marriage of your higher levels your lower levels your creator levels coming in coming through opening up acclimating activating and also integrating within the body principle higher and lower to begin to metaphor metamorphosize merge marry dissolve out the whole 
anchoring of the egoic state of consciousness, the anchoring of the soul level of consciousness, because even the soul level right now is being burnt away, burnt away. That's why there's so much going on with past incarnational choices and how much that's still affecting your current life stream on and on and on, and how that's literally being burned away. And you're saying, hey, man, namaste, have a blast. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to the old. Hello, hello to the new. And there was waking up, I was the queen of, I don't know, France or Sheba or something. And I was like, that was great way back when. And all the stuff, their expectations that I deserve all these jewels this time around. And I don't know what, what's wrong with everyone else. Well, from here, stuff's coming up, up, up and out because those old echoes, those old memories are coming up, phasing out, losing their ground, losing their grasp to where now you're coming right here, right now cleared and purified, your higher levels, your cradle levels, your manifest levels, the angelic, archangelic, send the host realms, and all of your entourage coming in and coming through and coming around, cheering you on because you're going through all these different levels and all these different rungs of honor that you're gaining, gaining in between realms and also in between live streams. But now you're at a point where we're off the cyclical cycle where that's why it's kind of, it's kind of fun to me because, you know, here we are, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and one day it's rain, the next day it's snow. I mean, who knows? Tomorrow we might have beachfront property, you know, with the way things are going on the planet, which is pretty awesome because it keeps you in a state where, okay, hey man, bring it on, let's go. Now, the tougher part for the emotional bodies, which are based in the egoic structure, what about all the dear ones being harmed? What about all the dear ones leaving the planet? What about dear ones being flooded out? Blah, 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 blah. Well, this is what I, I find it kind of interesting because the part, the areas on the planet that are being targeted when those mass collective catastrophic hypothetical catastrophic events it is going through a purification of the heavier denser pockets of consciousness in this body but also on the planet so the planet is cleansing its own decks one day you're standing there on top of mount everest next day it's a sinkhole now it has more to do with the density that's been locked into those planetary structures of planetary grid systems that are being imploded dissolved and it's interesting, you know, you look at the Twin Towers, you look at any of these interesting events. Now, dear ones are always given a heads up. doesn't matter if you're asleep as a doornail or awake as an angelic realm. Everyone's given the heads up that, you know, today I may not, you know, today I don't feel like going to work. So I'm going to go out here, go to the beach. I'm going to go over there, take a trip to see whoever, whatever. But you see, it's interesting. Everyone's being given a heads up. But then there's the dear ones that are going against themselves, their yearning, their heart, their consciousness, their even thought forms that are being sent to them from them. So, you know, today, you know, let's just throw it all away and let's go fishing or something. But the ego says to be responsible, I have to get up, get dressed for work, go to work, do my time, come home, go to sleep or have a beer, go to sleep and do it all again tomorrow. Now that's, that's more about a patterning of the mass collective consciousness not so much the clarity and the omnipotence of what you as creator, the facet of creator that you are, are being given a heads up to that, you know, today might not be a, a great day for whatever reason, you're not feeling it. And now it's like pulling teeth to get there. That's where we take a breath and we say, you know, why am I doing what I'm doing when I'm doing it? Which is a whole nother level in processivity of waking up to following your heart not the mind, not the head, not the ego. Is that better clarify that, Kieran? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, is everyone keeping up? Everyone keep, is everyone keeping up, you people, for their thumbs up? Right, well, okay, I don't know if I caught all of that, but the most profound thing that I heard you say in that statement was... Um, People are choosing to drop the body because they're coming back as part of the new paradigm with a different body and DNA structure, which doesn't Indeed. carry uh, karma or density from, you know, it doesn't carry the DNA density from their lineage and so on and so forth. So they're choosing to sort of take on another physical structure that's sparkly and newer, a bit like your Christmas lights behind you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and awake as well. I can't say they're totally wide awake, but from the indigo to the rainbows to the crystalline offsprings, you know, they're coming in in a state that's no longer ran by karma, dogma, weighted down. The lights are on. And now they're coming in more powerfully than ever. It's awesome when they come into a family that's already awake. 
but they're coming into denser families as well to shake up the whole family tree to say, hey, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And in sharing what is, but also sharing at different ways, different perspectives through their eyes, rather than all the stuff that's been told, taught, ran through, recycled, wash, rinse, repeat through the family monad, and also without being just um, <clears throat> deemed to be, well, it's just a kid, you know, where they're coming in with so much more communion, connectedness to where they're starting to have the ones that are already there to start, they're creating question marks within their consciousness to where they start to question, well, why am I doing what I'm doing when I'm doing it? What do I even enjoy? You know, because from here, it's one of these things that it's coming from the inside out and then the outside in being that of brother humanity as a whole, being that of light hitting, coming onto the planet, arising through the planet as a whole. So they're getting it from the inside out and the outside in. And they're doomed to perfection by all means. It's just a matter of how low you want to go until you finally decide, ah, I'm done with these games. I'm done with the voices of my father, my mother, the preacher, the priest, nuns, or whatever, whatever, way back there from a linear time continuum. Although time's not linear, it's up and down. Right. But regardless, you know, they're multidimensionality. Okay. Isn't, isn't it interesting when you listen, when I say, how is your father? And the first thing you do is hear his voice. And then you attach that voice to a memory. Uh -huh. How alive is your father right there in you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's a trip because you're bypassing time. Yeah. You're still sitting there having that same dialogue until you decide that ah, I'm going to reach over. Love you, dad. Namaste. Have a blast. Close that door. To where it's not a constant stream of consciousness that's being projected into your day-to-day -day life stream. Yeah. Which means you're bringing more and more of you here, right here, right now, multidimensionally. But now even multidimensionally is kind of an interesting thing too. Because when I look at multidimensionality, I look at two realms right here and then all that is. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm just going to stop you because you just talk so fast and you just throw all these concepts in and I'm just going to stop on one and just expand on it. Okay, so what you said just in that second is, uh, I'm sure I've missed a million other concepts and please, if anyone has grasped some concepts that you want to expand on, please let me know. You said that as we let go of that um, attachment to identity, I'm using my own words, I'm trying to decipher what you're saying, like to, to father and what father means to me and how I react to the fathering energy and blah, 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 blah. As we let go of all that human attachment, we expand and connect more to our multidimensionality. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. Okay. I changed my background because she's throwing out the old, look, I wonder if I wonder what that was. At first, I thought it was like, why is there blood on the screen? It, but she's, it's actually petals, I think, or I she's you're throwing a baby. Or something. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. So you connect more to your multidimensionality. Okay. So I'm I'm also going to go back a little bit and talk about death. So as humans, we get so upset about death. And we don't think multidimensionally. We don't think outside of time and space. We think of somebody as we identify them in their body, their body personality <laughs> complex, instead of their soul, which is outside time and space, which can play in all life forms and, you know, can play in time and space. And, and, and we I, have I, you I, at your higher levels. Pardon? Say that again. And we have you as your higher levels. Yeah, so so with this death thing that we get so upset about, because I know that we've um, spoken about this in the Inner Sanctum before, saying that, uh, you know, there's a lot of ideas around what's happening as we move, like the people that aren't enlightened are going to are going to die, and then the people. So why are enlightening people dying? And there's sort of confusion around this whole death thing, but um, just like you said, people that are very enlightened and very awake are dropping the body because they're choosing to come back in another body and to play again and to teach and evolve this world from another with another vehicle right uh -huh. and so there's no from the soul's perspective there's no dilemma there 
There's no sadness of dropping the body, even though it might you might exit with an illness or a tragedy or something. Is that right? Somewhat. Okay. Um, there's another part to it. That's why okay. I threw in your higher level. Is you. Okay. That, that is you. Many get confused here because you're not separate from your higher levels. You are your higher levels. The soul level is like a record keeper, almost like a CD. That, okay, there's this life, that life, this, that life, 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 that life. You're in the middle. Okay. You're reflecting onto the soul level from all these incarnational journeys you're identified into identifying you when when this happens that happens that happens this is going to happen based upon the soul level of consciousness when this has happened before it's almost like the subconscious in some ways but you go back to there you're reflecting back onto it the soul level is the part right now that's dissolving out go into past incarnational journeys whatever you best best accommodate you but the past lives is part of the soul level, not part of you. It's you that has a soul that went through those experiences that keep everything stored within, within the soul level, but also each and every cell, each and every molecule, atom, subatom in the body that has all these memories. That's why you look at a snake and <clears throat> because in this journey back here, you most likely died by venom or maybe got swallowed by a python who knows but but it's that big charge to speak for an example the soul level that was in this body prior to me yeah. he was out in the yard he found a rubber tire because that's what they're made of he was playing with the rubber tire and this little gardener snake came out he's like he didn't know what it was so he was like wow he was holding it he was looking at it, trying to kiss it, and all this fun stuff, until his mother came running out, put it down, ah! and, and that right there, it triggered through his soul level an instantaneous reaction, not just the subconscious of the body. Subconscious is one thing, but it created a phobia from past incarnations when the same thing occurred with that journey. It got all brought up in that moment that said, Snakes are scary. They're terrifying. Yeah. Kind of like when your parents came up out and said, get out of the street, you're going to get hit by a truck and or a bus or whatever. There's the instantaneous anchor with such force of what they're projecting towards you. And this, I'm, I'm speaking just, it's this incarnation right now, but the same thing applies prior in not past, but multidimensionally. So you're accessing that, that's coming up. Then all of a sudden you have a phobia. A phobia out of something that makes no logical common sense at all. It's a phobia that gets instilled within the soul level that says, this over here is dangerous based in past incarnational journeys. Maybe you were thrown off a, off a bridge. Maybe you were stoned to death. Maybe you got stoned to death, I mean, who knows? But from here, you went back and that right there is being projected forward through your soul level, through the emotional calibration lattice work, through the subconscious, all the way to the conscious. And then the sirens go on, say fear or phobia, anxiety, whatever it may be for you personally. And then you want to run, 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 run. But why are you running? It's still just that little tire with a little gardener snake in there but it was all the fear that was thrown towards you. Run, run for your life. That became instilled in the body packages from the soul level. And that's why we call it, like I do processes like soul memory clearing, complete cell, cellular mind body alignment, on and on and on, to where it's usually energetically, energetic work. But the point is, is that it clears the cause, quote, the record, and the effect of it and debris when you get a Reiki attunement. One of the first meditations when you're going through the attunement is let's go back to the first time you ever experienced Reiki, which technically is sun energy. Well, you spirit, you experienced it all this life. It was just given a different name. It was your parent picking you up, blowing off you when you skinned your knee or whatever. They already started doing energy work, just not aware of it. But it's a soul memory. Now, when we get rid of all the soul memories and all the debris there, you imagine what it would be like and who you will be 
because now you're becoming you, not all the memories anymore and identities. Did that better explain that, Karen? Uh, absolutely, William. Absolutely. Um, so what you're saying is you said that we are dissolving the soul. We're dissolving the soul. And the soul is the part of us that holds all the memories and the trauma from past lives. Is that right? Yes. In experiences. In experience. So as we dissolve the soul and clean up all the trauma of past lives and karma and all that stuff, what, what incarnates into the next body, into the next experience? It's still the soul, right? Yeah. I don't know. Well, now it's different. Now yeah. it's you as you, you as creator, so, you so, as the facet of creator that you are. So more like your higher self. Yeah. Kinda. It's more like the higher self, which is kind of what we can do in this life too. Yeah. So that's like what, who you are. So you're not a soul that has all these past incarnations here on earth anyway. You're a higher self from a higher perspective incarnate into a body. So we're kind of but, come back as William, right? Yeah, or or Bob or <laughs> Lucille, who knows? Yeah, but more, more like you, more like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because what's what's going on, you know, is that, okay, you go to Pleiades, but now let's just say the soul level, if I'm going to break it down more, it's, you know, like those pinballs that are like solid lead, you know, when you play a pinball machine? Uh-huh. Okay, put that right down here right behind your solar plexus a little bit to the right actually that would be your soul level solid matter of fact man magnetic so i'm going to come into a body with my soul level i'm going to have all these predestined experiences that are going to play out all for me to wake up as a trinity spirit and soul in form you being the spirit, the soul is the magnetic level of the Trinity that projects experiences and manifestations all around you. Why does this keep happening? That keep happening. I, I rise to love. They rise to love. We're in love. We get married, blah, blah, blah. We have a couple of kids. And then psh, she's out with the mailman or male lady these days. Who knows? Mail something. Now from here, you know, couldn't now these days are Zulu sexuals. I mean, she took off with the cat. Now from here, we go here and now they're totally out of the picture and you're sitting here as a soul journey or saying, okay, well, I can, I can rebuild. And you take the kids, you take, it's kind of like country music song. You take the kids, you take the truck, your dog that got ran over or whatever, and you get it back in the truck, you get moving. And then here comes, let's just call it relationship number two. It's a, you have more kids before you know it, you have the Partridge family, a whole school bus full. And then bam, they take off with the Girl Scouts or something, who knows, or on Greenpeace or, you know, all that fun stuff. And so, well, what the heck happened? So you get back on the magic bus, reminds me a little bit of Charles Manson. Okay, then you go from here, you get going again, and then, oh, here's the next partner, the love of my life, beloved of my heart. One of the cliches is divine compliment, soul journeyer, and all that fun stuff. My twin flame, which is, I'm the male, you're the female, we're going to play our male and female together and battle the whole time. That's like marriage counseling and in the waiting. Now from here, we're going to do that. <clears throat> you're going to wake up. You're going to rise more. They're going to wake up. They're going to rise more. And then all of a sudden, the famous tagline in the enlightenment community, I just don't resonate with you anymore. So they're going to take off. Now, now we're going to a whole different journey to, but now it's sort of like victim number eight. Okay, now you're going to go there. Same thing's going to happen. Now, what's running that? It's the soul level that's still trying to understand, trying to get its own attention about self-love, not looking outside of itself. That's the soul level. You, therefore, you are true love. You are pure love. You are true light. You are pure light. That's why they call it a trinity, spirit and soul in the mammalian species, that being human, hue, the ancient sound of creator in the mammalian species. Now, what would it be like, just for clarity, to no longer have that magnetic little pinball over here, throwing one journey, partridge family, whatever, whatever on the magic bus, to have all that dissolved. We're no longer our tunnel vision, 
We're no longer in a pinpoint of expression. Many want to know, what's my mission? Well, I said, I'm hoping you don't have one because that goes back to the karmic grid system. Yeah. Now, who are you? Not with your mom's voice, not with dad's voice, not with society's voice, not with the church's voice, not with Tom Sawyer's voice, not with any voices except you. Now we're stepping it up. We're arising into love, not falling into emotion, which is most often misinterpreted as love. You don't fall in love. You arise to love. Yeah, beautiful. You fall into emotion. This is, hey, you check all my, all my, my uh, little check marks on my resume of a partner. Okay, great. It looks like we're going to make it. You know, so and, you know, I don't know who signs what contract or whatever, but from here, it, it's an interesting one, right? Because now it's not about not enjoying. You may have your preferences, great, but now they're not loaded. You're not locked into your preferences. Then we get into opening, opening to all that is, and of course, as all that is. Okay. Is that fun? Let me ask you. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think it's fantastic. Let me ask you. Would you call that, you know, embodiment of the higher love, you know, the Christ consciousness? Depends. Chrysalis state of consciousness, it's a constant state of consciousness of pure light. There's no me, me, me involved. Now, I stay away from that term on purpose because what, and because if you're going to break it down, it's the activation of all of your crystalline structure which is often mistaken as your light bodies. It's being activated, amplified. That's why it's called the Christ. The crystallic state of consciousness going through a full embodied integration of you as creator through and waking up the crystallic states of consciousness to where there is no polarity, is no duality. But when I start talking about the Christ consciousness, everyone starts going like this. Yeah. And the hand on the cross kind of thing. I and they, know. They, they go back to that belief system that love yeah. equals pain. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. And sacrifice, suffering, martyrdom, mm -hmm. which is so polarizedly uh, the opposite of the true crystal state of consciousness. Right. Right. Oh, wow. Brilliant, beautiful, amazing. There's no like solid word except pure consciousness. Pure you're consciousness being a nebulae opening, expanding, and then we get into the in-breath, out-breath. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, let me ask you. No, anything at all. How many people would you identify, would you know of, that embody that on earth at the moment if you were to, like, give a number? Is, are there many people like that on earth at the moment? I've met a lot that were definitely going there. Uh -huh. I've met a lot that are semi there, but the unfortunate part, you know, you look at the Lamas, the Dalai Lamas, you know, uh, not from another belief system, more as the honesty, the integrity, the purity within their heart. That's what I base it on. Mm -hmm. Now I've met a lot. I've met several that let's just say are doing their utmost to get their ASAP, but that's where from the ego perspective, ego, male ego, female ego, uh, whatever you want to call it. Ego, I don't like that word a whole lot because it says everything and nothing at the same time. It's like an ego, let go of my ego, kind of like you're having waffles. Now from here, it's one of those things where you're saying, okay, hmm, in this situation, so-and-so said this, they did that, rah, rah, rah. And it hurt me. Now, did it hurt you? Or did it hurt the ego? You don't hurt. It's impossible for you to feel one ounce of pain. And then, unfortunately, and it, it really is unfortunate, Karen, and everybody, how even enlightenment, spirituality, on and on and on, all these interesting terms and phrases, it's so interesting, right? I mean, it feels better, obviously, to feel worthy rather than not worthy. It feels better to feel lovable rather than not lovable. 
feels better to be wanted unless it's from the FBI rather than not wanted. <laughs> now, from here, or even the CIA. You, you, you are on a roll today. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's all different levels of the ego. Yeah. And can you just be and become? I'm not saying, like, let's not go sit on pillows and wear a home and all that. I mean, that, that's kind of like, you know, hang me now. Yeah, because <laughs> that would drive me nuts. Now, from here, because it's separation, segregation of, you see, with the Tibetans that are moving down into this, out of the mountains now. They're moving down out of the mountains to in, now intertwine with humanity. Not to be the ones way up here doing what they're doing. Yeah. Now we're bringing light to create to the darkness per se. Yeah, and, and that's part of the fun, you know, when you're doing an event. I implore for everyone to pick the dear one that seems to be the most troubled or dense in the room. The one with the big wanting to growl and blah blah blah, because that's where you're going to find some serious gifts. If we all run around and put flowers in each other's hair or something or up your backside, that's not going to do much for the rest of humanity, right? Okay, I've got more questions. Has anyone else got any questions? I don't see any questions arising. I think you've just bamboozled most people. They're like, Shirley's laughing. Everyone's got their jaw open. Uh, anyway, okay. Hey, Brad. <laughs> Brad's got the dog. What is that, the cat? <laughs> huh? It's a blanket. Yeah, oh, it's blanket. a blanket. Oh. I thought it was a dog. <laughs> Um, so this is how civilizations operate, like, you know, on the Pleiades or Sirius or something like that. They operate outside karmic structure, ego, soul, memory. They operate as physical form, physical beings streaming that crystalline consciousness, that pure consciousness. Is this, is this how it works on other planets? Well, here's the deal. If you can imagine that, yes. If you imagine okay, the answer is yes. But I want you to imagine it for a moment. As a crystalline frequency, that's like, whoa, 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 and things like that. But yet, at the source in the core of it, there's no solid matter. Yeah. So I don't look at my fellow Pleiades and say, hey, Bob, what's up? High five or fist bump. You know, it's not like that, okay? It's that you intertwine the, the octaves, the frequencies, the color -esque You have your own rungs of honor. You, you've left the planet. Everyone gets rungs of honor. Even from, what is his name? Something about a ladle. No, Bin Laden. That's what it is. And, and then you know, Hitler, blah, blah, blah. Everyone has rung of honor. Now, they're vibrating at different frequencies, of course, but they still intertwine to where you, you start to create different octaves. So what, what would be, and where you inter, you immerse to where those frequencies, those colors, they intermingle. And that's how you connect with others on that planet. You don't necessarily procreate because you don't have a body to procreate with. You are consciousness. Now, the trip part from all the books that are out there, from, um, from Orion to Pleiades to Sirius, on and on, well, many, they're doing their best. Hallelujah. Great job. It's great. It's very important that we do share it, express it. But now we have to take the humanness out of it, okay? So mother, father, sister, brother, on and on, it just doesn't exist. There's not an hierarchy of government. That's only a human trait on this planet. Many misinterpret, not by any fault of their own. It just has to do with how open they are and how open they are that they're able to download, receive data and information. Because data information... It comes into you, it downloads through the crown all the way through your whole body. Then it comes up through the subpsyche to the, to the conscious mind. That's where you have those aha moments. Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine with me through the subconscious and the emotional calibration lattice work for a moment. I want you to look at all the filters that are there. It must be like XYZ, it must be that way, this way, ABC. 
It's got to be like QRST and on and on. So the universe is never going to mess with your filters. That's for you to reconcile. They'll assist mm -hmm. you if you ask. Mm -hmm. But that's where we get back to even sharing with yourself. Okay, I'm a clear and perfect channel of divine love and truth. Now, the more that you say that, the more you feel it, the more you welcome that in, you're going to get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer knowledge and clarity. Because that gives you permission, your higher level's permission, the rest of yourself, which is your higher level permission, to go direct, go direct, go direct. Because now we're bypassing what I, and the reason why I talk so fast at times, I'm bypassing all the ego filtrations, the mind, and going right for the gold, right into your heart, and then letting you bring up within your heart from the internalized activation, the externalized activation, to create an awesome commingling within yourself to where it allows for all this unraveling for yourself and yourself personally to arise, rise, come up, open up, and then we get into odd uh, dreams and you know, all that fun stuff, you know, like my odd dreams that present at times I'm riding around on a tricycle in, in lingerie. I, I don't get it. But from here, I'm just teasing. But from here, the odd dreams that it's not just about, okay, I'm on a tricycle wearing lingerie. Okay, what does the tricycle mean? Blah, 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 blah. Now, it's about the metaphor that you're given in those states. It is kind of cool because it creates a reconciliation, but also a clarity. Sometimes it may be looking at a big giant um, onyx cross, which just presented a moment ago. That's not just about dying on the cross. It's about all the heaviness, pain, suffering, torment. Sometimes maybe it's a guidance post, but it's for everyone individually. It's like conglomerates of life streams just in one symbology. Whew, Rach. <clears throat> Rachel's got her hand up. <laughs> I already do want a high five. Okay. <laughs> she's, she's awesome. she's I, was just, I was just wondering if you could repeat what you said before. I, it was very quick. Um, you said something about I am a divine loving being. Oh, no, I said I'm a clear and perfect channel of divine love and truth. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's say that again. I'm a clear, you, are a divine love, you are a divine loving being, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm you a too. clear, perfect channel of divine love and truth. Yes. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a clear, perfect channel of divine love and truth. We can all say that a few million times a day. Yeah. I'm a clear, <laughs> you. You know, it's I am a clear, perfect channel of divine love and truth. And then I am, I am my creator are one. So I am not my creator are one. And just how does that feel when you're saying that? It's not so much as a mantra. It's more as a reminder for you. I love the one where, hey, you know what? Do we have all this stuff around us in this world? Now, you know what? This is how my angel actually presented. I looked at relationships and I was in La Jolla on a Friday night. I went and had some bread and some wine at my favorite restaurant, which was Top of the Cove, watching the sunset over La Jolla. And it was the most beautiful thing. And, then, and I walked around that Friday night looking at the art galleries, things I love. And there was this big download from Sananda, actually, and as well as Francis as well. And Michael, yeah. You know, uh, and I was curious, okay, well, what the heck's going on here? I mean, I see dear ones laughing, playing, partying, but, but it all seems so pretense. And it was interesting when I was presented with it and walking down the streets with them, how this dear one's going to say this, say that, say that, do this, do that, all four. And then the other one's going to do this, that, 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 act, react, depending upon what's being said and done by the other dear one, all for the sake of a musculature reaction. Now, that made no sense to me, because it, it really doesn't. I mean, tell them what they want to hear. Okay, I'm going to say this, you're going to say that, then I'm going to say this, you're going to say that, and all of a sudden we're, quote, in love. I mean, it doesn't work for me. Then you have muscular reactions. And then the next day, what's your name again? You know, and, and it was kind of like the most bizarre thing for me until I said, you know, because I knew I didn't want that. That was just you know, it was just a waste of time as far as I was concerned. It had no interest. So I said, you know, I want to know what I want. 
I want to know what I want. I want to know what I would enjoy. Now, I want to be clear when I say this, I'm not saying it to an outside deity. I'm saying it to the rest of myself that opens up that clear and perfect channel of divine love and truth. And sure enough, a couple of days later, I was doing a volunteer day at, I think it was Bath and Body Works, something about a rubber duck product they were coming out with, doing chair massage. I get a phone call from someone in Las Vegas, invited to come do my first speaking event ever. Great. My agreement with the universe, if you present the opportunity, I will show up. So I follow through with showing up. My angel was right there in the front row. It's the same woman being, the only thing I recognized were the eyes, because I kept seeing these eyes in the shower. They kept saying, all is well, all is well, all is well. When I was going through all the meltdown of the old will stuff, and then there she was in the front row. Now, I could not analytically have ever contemplated that as a manifestation. I had no clue that those eyes belonged to someone. I just figured, okay, another version of the eye of Horus or blah, blah, blah. But sure enough, there she was. Now, that goes beyond, I want to find my divine compliment. Because divine compliment, that's scary. Because you go through the karmic lattice work. And when you come together, you do this, that, and the other. You push your buttons. You push their buttons. They're going to push your buttons. And then we end up in therapy or separated. Well, the button part is all wonderful on that, but this is where we go to graduate school. That's still where that's still where we're playing in elementary school. Okay, now we rise to the occasion. We look at another through the eyes of your heart, the eyes of love. No longer through the filters of the ego that says you're my number one. As long as you do what I say, when I say when I say it, how to say it, do I do it? Now. That's the I, that's kind of the interesting sort of the mass collective relationship. To, hey, we're all perfect as long as you do what I ask. Okay, and okay. I'll for you. Yeah. Okay, let, let, let me get this right. You oh, asked. Perfect. So when you said muscle reaction, are you talking about kissing or sex? Sex. <laughs> well, you know where it squirts out and it's like, oh, all of that for that. I mean, give me a break. Well, I've had chewing gum better than that. So from that, from here. <laughs> okay. it, it, it's it kind of like, why and what? what didn't did you go bankrupt and you're still just having that 20 second or whatever it is. So what did, what did you ask for again? You didn't want the muscle reaction, but you wondered, what did you ask for? What did you I ask want, for? I want to know what I want. I want to know what I want. And what, and what, was, what was it that you wanted? Well, sure enough, my angel presented a couple of weeks later at my first event ever. Okay. I had no idea. If you asked me if I want to be in a relationship, I'd say, do you have a gun? and you know <laughs> like that what is all i want and she yeah. turns up what's the agreement what's the soul of, no okay so what's the agreement the consciousness agreement between the two of you as you are as you are together as a couple in the physical incarnation in this lifetime well you know i'll, I'll go to our i'll go to our wedding vows i i wrote my own and she wrote her own and in our wedding vows the biggest thing was I love you with all my heart, but I will be true to you as I am true to myself. Because I'm not true to myself, I cannot be true to you. So as I'm coming from my healthy, whole, and completeness, you're coming from your healthy, whole, and completeness, we could both be true then to one another. Because I have my journey, she has her journey. Then we have our journey together. Now, if I'm not being true to myself, and by default, automatically, magnetically, we can get into all the breakdown, I'll be bringing that into between our hearts. It goes vice versa. If she's not being true to herself, it'll come in between our hearts. Now, are we here to save the planet and the parrots way off in Africa somewhere? No. Okay. Although African, they're kind of cool, you know, the parrots, but, you know, but from here, you know, we're not here to save the animals, the dogs, the cats, turkeys, and dolphins, whales. No, but Oops. you are here as a teacher. I am. Uh, and so the, okay, so when I say the agreement, so you're a higher consciousness being incarnated into a physical form in this arena called Earth where you haven't explored before, uh, you would, you know, and then there is this companionship, um, 
apart from romance and and what did you call it the uh, muscle reaction <laughs> yeah yeah um but there's also does she ground you because you're sort of you know off the chart intelligent and only if i other... speeding only if i speed and get tickets <laughs> You're off flying around in other dimensions. Does she bring you yeah. back to Earth? You know, what's the agreement? Does she help you as you are the teacher? Um, apart from companionship, what's the agreement there between the two? I would say, I would say in many ways, since I'm working and playing in so many different realms, she really keeps me here. Yeah. So like before we met, I would hop in the car, put on a seatbelt, and like I'd be driving down Highway 805 or 5 in San Diego, and it was easy for me to go over 100 because the whole license plate, I'm mean, not the license plate, the windshield would turn into solar system. So I'd be working from <laughs> L.A. to San Diego. And she's encouraged me maybe not to do that <laughs> and and things like that. So I, I put a little bit of the, you know, the air brakes on a little bit to become, especially when she really didn't want me to do it when she was in the car. So from here, you know, she's helped me ground that way. She's also helped me ground with, you know, it's funny, right? The, you know, abundance comes in, go, we pay our bills, goes out, blah, 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 blah. But my version was just put it all in the bank and I had no clue about taxes. When I asked, I asked the universe to show me about taxes, I walked into Starbucks one day or one evening, it was probably about 10 after it got off work uh, from doing massages. And it was the most interesting thing because I heard over to the right, you don't have to pay taxes. And there was this fellow sitting there. He had a Time magazine, showed me his picture on the cover. And it's like, okay, well, cool. You know, let's sit down. I'll buy a cup of coffee, whatever. And, and it was cool because he he showed, you know, on paper, you don't legally have to pay taxes, legally speaking. Now, given the facts of all that, that's very true. He won the court battle and everything. But the bummer was... He lost his wife, his trucking company, and pretty much everyone around him because he stood by that guard of not having to pay taxes, and he won. But it was like, well, well, did, you, I really don't want to go there. Sorry, <laughs> so, could you say that again? So from, here, so from here, it was like one of those things. Yeah, I don't have to, but I can. What would be most fluid and easy? So I learned about taxes. Well, technically, my angel taught me a lot about it after we met, after our first speaking event ever. And then I started doing events and she, we hired an accountant on and on because it's kind of like, okay, do I like to have roads to drive on? Do I like to have public transportation if I would like it? Or, you know, things to keep everything moving around. But it's interesting because she keeps me grounded into that stuff, not identified, but the practicalities of parts of having a body. On absolutely, a absolutely, absolutely. So, William, it sounds like when you first sort of started offering help, you were doing body work. Were you doing body work? Were you? Were you I was I doing. I was doing energy work, massage, and you know, sports massage, all kinds of fun things. When everything else started to open up. And technically, when I look at it, it was more about learning how to be in a body on a planet mm -hmm. rather than just bam, 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 bam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would imagine that a lot of information came to you about the people that you were massaging. That's, that's what happened to me when I started, when I was working as a yeah. massage therapist. I'm just getting all this information. I'm like, what the? Yeah. And I ended up going into the Akashic Records. Yeah. Um, not because I, I didn't even know what they were called. It was Kasha what? You know, but it was one of these things that started revealing yeah. itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we have a new new uh, fellow on. Hey, how you yeah, doing, buddy? Th that's and David. Here. If you went back home where you come from today, what would be your nicest things about Earth and why people want to come here? Freedom, love, expression, sense, touch, feel. And the ability to express, whether it's in song or just frequencies. And then how, what I find really curious is how dear ones act and interact. And even when they're not even aware that they're acting or interacting, I find it really curious how they're acting, interacting, even energetically. They're living in a symbiotic circle, but all cycle, but also flow. 
where you're in the grocery store, two hypothetical strangers that totally know one another, but not on this plane, but how they will go by, intermingle, and keep going, and then they'll look back and says, huh, what just happened? But it's the soul recognition part, vibrationally speaking, that they're intertwining and then spiraling beyond. So it's like you're touching base, giving a high five, and then namaste to brother, have a blast. And then that whole journey is complete from the soul level of consciousness, from incarnation realms, from everything from first separation to now. It's like you stamp the time clock, but cognitively speaking, they have no clue what just happened. I find that really curious. Fantastic. Fantastic. Did that and do you... Do you experience impatience ever with humanity that we're a bit slow on this planet? You know, I really don't. And here's why. When I look at why dear ones do what they do when they do it, I find it really interesting because, you know, it's one of those things where someone may keep banging their head against the wall metaphorically, but I'm watching what happened in the womb. Um, I'm watching what's happened several incarnations prior. I'm watching what's happened, what's happening through their childhood, all these chains around them that they have considered to be protection of a comfort zone. Now, when I go further with it, you, you're able, and this is where, you know, somebody get concerned about, well, do I have their permission on and on? Well, you don't need anyone's permission to love them. It's not, you're not working on them because there's fault. You're assisting them because of love. And that's where I watch more often than not, like even their shoulders drop, their hearts open, they become clearer, they become sharper, they become really just right here, you know, and the light bulbs start coming on. And I, that, that's what gives me a lot, a lot of joy. Fantastic. I'm being selfish, but one really quick question I ask everyone. What's the purpose of whales, the, the, the species on planet Earth? They're, they're so kind of higher beings, but they're in these huge bodies eating krill all day. Yeah, exactly. Their main purpose, when I look at it, now that you're bringing it up, there's like a grid that goes all the way through the oceanic realms. What they do, especially the greys, the belugas, the pilots, yeah, in the sperm whales, they're holding a certain, they, you listen to them and they're constantly adjusting, but yet holding those grid systems in place. They're also holding the astral planes, but they go beyond the astral planes into the celestial realms. It's like they're constantly holding those doors open for brother humanity, for the consciousness to rise. And then we watch planetary ships and there's all these beach whales and stuff like that. And that, that goes to show you, okay, huh, now what's going on with the magnetic grid system? Because what happened is the grid system shifted. So now they get a little bit disoriented because remember, they don't operate like eyesight, blah, blah, blah. They operate, operate from magnetics, frequencies, and tones. And when they're bouncing the tones off the land, which started to become like automatic pilot for a while, but now they kept swimming on the shore, not knowing what the heck's going on because they're following the ley lines. But now how blessed we are that they've switched tracks to get back into another alignment. I mean, the grids are gonna to continue to change. They're gonna to continue to acclimate. The light grids are already coming through, which is awesome. And they're not just like grids like this and that. They go become, they come like that. They become like that. They become all the way through all sorts of different directions that they follow, but also attuning, acclimating, activating. And that's and it also affects the porpoises. As far as I'm concerned, the porpoises are kind of the same, the dolphins. They're not holding that magnetic resonance as much, but they're affecting them and they're playing with cosmic DNA that are also kind of leafleting the planet, connecting throughout the web of the planet. Because remember, as you're birthing, the planet's birthing, the planet's going to birth more, then you're going to rise into higher states, on and on and on. But you see, it creates this inner webbing, kind of like the DNA of the whole planet and the species of humanity that's also evolving. And how they hold that, but also they bring forth, I guess I would call it, there's all these terminologies, but almost like psychic surgery in some ways. That's where you watch the porpoises 
come close to you and like bang against you. If when you go to the doctor, you find that there's cancer, blah, blah, blah. It's such that beautiful, pure love. I remember one time I was doing an event in, was at Waikoloa Resort in, in uh, Hawaii. And it was so cool. I went into the dolphin pool and it was the most interesting thing how multidimensional they are because they're also connecting with Pleiades. They're connecting with the celestial realms, not so much the angelic, but more the Pleiades Orions. And from here, I was connecting with one dolphin in one pool. And I, I, I literally, I stepped into the water. All, all these dear ones are laughing, singing, blah, blah, blah. And hey, you know, more power to you. Great job. But it was interesting. You walk into the water and I felt the most sadness that I had ever felt. And I was like, okay, what is up here? You know, and because I didn't feel one way or the other before I hopped in the water. It's not woe is on and on. But come, come to understand from what it was sharing with me, the sadness was because its pod was seriously about 150 yards away in the oceanic realm, and it couldn't take its body from point A to point B. But however, it knew they were they were still communicating, just like you know we are right now, but closer physically. Now. They're communicating, communicating, they communicate with telepathy. And so beautifully, I mean, it goes beyond space and time. It goes beyond linear and even given telepathy is kind of like dwindling it down, but they have that direct connect, but the bodies just couldn't connect, commingle and come together physically. So what happened was that your one was sharing with me how they decided to go here all for the sake of clarity, understanding, and science. They help humanity understand their species, their kingdoms, all the gifts that they bring to the planet through their species and their kingdoms, to where now it's like to raise up the consciousness for more and more of an equal understanding. Same with the whales as well. But the porpoises are kind of like the, it's kind of like you and I having a business and the, the porpoises are kind of like our gophers. They'll go for coffee, go male stuff, whatever, whatever, they're the more intercommingled species. And, but yet, and they're much less threatening. So their ones don't go into so much fear with the dolphins as they do with the big massive whales, whale sharks, and on and on and on. So the whale sharks, they're kind of monitoring the whole oceanic realms with the sharks that, ever, that they only snack on things that, um, that are sick and ill. You know, it's kind of like the cleanup crew of the oceanic realm. And from to you know avoid diseases and all the obvious, but it was the most interesting journey because they were showing how even and I went from that one to uh, being presented with what was it like area somewhere over in Nevada um, of the ones that they have in captivity that they're, they do studies with, and so it was all for the sake of helping humanity's consciousness rise up, preferably the light bulbs coming on. Rather than looking at it as another war toy, looking at it as a XYZ, more of a community. Hey, I like the background. That's cool. You know, um, where they can come together more in a harmonious state. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I have Starbucks. <laughs> okay. Am I, he am I hearing you say yeah. that the whales and the dolphins are here uh, in service to humanity and the earth. Yes. They, they don't necessarily have to be here to have their experience because they've got their own planet they can do that on. Yeah, and, and that's so, it's so different, right? Because they're here to hold a magnetic resonance and right. harmony. Right. And like before, what was it, 85, 86, when the placeholders it started shifting to where even like, the fairies, the divas, the gnomes, the ones that would hold uh, the forest intact. Uh, they would even, oddly enough, assist with forest fires and redirecting it to burn off the old to diminish, uh, really to diminish like sicknesses, viruses, um, funguses going through the forest. So they would work as an attribute in, in you know, communion with nature, with the clouds, lightning and things like that to create, to burn off certain areas 
to where it would not take over the whole kingdom. So it's kind of cool how all of it works together so brilliantly and so beautifully. Uh, absolutely. Rach, you've got your hand up, darling one. Hi. Thank you. I have been aware uh, lately, <laughs> it's all come together, that I've been working with really powerful dragon energy. Yeah. For quite some time without understanding what it was. It brought a lot of fear when I first um, became aware of it uh, and it felt very big and powerful. Um, and so I turned away from it because it felt too big and powerful and a little bit too scary. Um, uh -huh. And I've since opened back up to it. A lot of information has been coming through about dragons and their role um, and about them coming back to help in certain ways or being reintroduced energetically in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if you might speak about that, please, William. Yeah, they come from the celestial realm and the mystical realms. They're working hand in hand with the archangelic realms. They're coming, they in, they're coming in with purificational qualities, but also a lot of mysticism qualities. And the mysticism's having you look beyond your boxes to start seeing the nebulae, to start seeing everything in all the dimensions beyond dimensions, portals beyond portals all around you. They're coming in also to embrace you, but also to take the astral plane to consciousness, purify it, divinitize it, clear it out from all the souls that are still stuck due to their own magnetic resonance, due to their own density, their own hangups, blah, 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 belief systems, blah, 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 and all that stuff. They're here also to assist for all of it to transcend well, it's kind of like a spiral with ease and grace, creating portal and vortex after vortex for these attributes to be open, divinitized, purified. And because they also go into the work with St. Germain, the violet flame, and not so much the I am religion, but definitely the violet flame attribute of divination, purification, and reactivation of sacredness. Does that better clarify that? And they also work a lot with magnetics, uh, not math magnetics, but mathematics. Because when I uh, tune into them, I see a lot of numbers uh, flickering. Thank you very much. You've actually given me a great deal of uh, confirmation around the things that have been happening for me. During university, I did a maths major. I love numbers. Um, exactly. You know, all of these things that are dropping in that have just gone bang, bang, bang for me just in that moment that you were speaking about it. Um, and makes complete and perfect sense on many levels. Thank you very much. Well, anytime. There's also all the portals, matrices, with all the encodements of consciousness. Encodements of consciousness go with the mathematics, but you're going to be presented with more and more symbologies as well as numbers. They mm -hmm. go hand in hand, and they're, they're all keys in activators. Okay, lovely. Thank you so much. Well, anytime, sweetheart. Anytime. I had Jill Stein on the show talking about dragon energy. And as I was tuning in, a few people had talked about it before, but I'd never felt it so strongly as with Jill. And as I was tuning in, I was feeling that and I felt that angelic connection that like, uh -huh. I felt like I was talking to the angels. So you've just mm -hmm. confirmed that for me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was always, always and I love the whale in your background. I know he's cool, isn't he? Wow. This is just been awesome. Whale is good I want to. I'm also going to introduce you to Sheila Seppi, who has a has a group called the Wish Alliance, which stands for uh, Walk-ins, Indigos, Star Seeds. What's the other one? Uh, hybrids. Can I do that, William? Can I introduce you? Well, to I would be, I'd be more than honored. And yeah. she and she would do something like this with you as as well with her group. Okay. Sounds awesome. Would you do that? Yeah, because uh, oh, she's awesome. I'm sort of an ambassador for the Wish Alliance as well. So there's lots of groups to speak to. But, okay, so I'm going to open it up oh, again. Anyone else? Most definitely, because the veils are becoming less and less dense. They're becoming actually more and more translucent. And that's part of what I love. When you let your eyes go out of focus, just looking up in the sky or at a plant or even walls, when you let them go out of focus, you just kind of hold them there. What you start to see is you start to see the presence of, it, it could be a rock, it can be, I mean, a brick, really. All of it has a presence. And it's so cool how it, it's happening so quickly, so beautifully, but also so gradually to where it's not to create fear within dear ones, like going insane or, or perceiving that. It's more of a comfort, more of a confirmation of home within and through dear ones. 
that are opening up in their own unique individuality that are speeding up, accelerating up, amplifying up, and also moving lighter, brighter, faster to where we're making a smooth and easy transition and also waking up and opening up to to all the availability, all the assistance, the angelic, archangelic, send the host realms, the celestial realms, all the way from on planet, off planet, and everywhere in between. But it all comes back to you as a facet of creator that you are, that are welcoming home yourself. Creator as a whole, you being a part of that whole, is welcoming back all of its beautiful facets. As creator has been advancing and evolving upon itself, through the physical experience. It's what can be back all the physical experiences, all the clarities, but also turning on the light bulbs to where now the magnetic resonance, polarized states, dualistic principles, physical, mental, and emotional are all dissolving as you're coming to now awakening and coming to the party. Yes. And also Alicia has got curious thoughts regarding disclosure of ETs. When you think we will become more fully, more fully, telepathic people what a great question Fisher. as it stands right now not that it can't be sped up but as it stands right now to to make it more of a global attribute it looks like about the beginning of 2031 not to say it's not going to happen around 2026 and gradually increasing till then but by 2031 it'll be more of a common thing rather than spot so spotty and scattered uh, okay, so, so would you say 2026, 2031, not no. that it can't be speeded up. And, and that question actually no. dovetails with something that I wanted to ask you too, because you were talking about people leaving the planet because they wanted to incarnate into a different body DNA structure and, um, and then people embodying more of their higher self as they dissolve their soul and their karmic patterns and so on and so forth. What do you think, like, how long is that going to be before the world's kind of more like that? Right. That, look, that looks by, you know, it's, it's happening so rapidly. So I'm looking at from between 24 and 28, it should all be complete. Really? Yeah. Hang on, and hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So as, as we see the world in this absolute mess at the moment with people fighting about vaxxers, anti-vaxxers, government control, yeah, yeah. pedophilia, uh -huh. you know, as all the distortion is being revealed in this world, yeah. You reckon we're going to clean all that up by when? 20, 2028? I'm looking, I'm, looking, I'm looking between 26 and 28 where, when I say not, I don't mean it like fully cleaned up. I mean it fully exposed with now taking long-term beneficial actions uh -huh. to be able to reharmonize and come back together in the wholeness of all that is. Okay. So that's why you watch today, tomorrow, yesterday, day before. So much stuff coming up, hitting the mainstream. There first, there's the action reactions, and then there's the calming period, an integrated period, and then there's gonna be a part beyond the integrated period to now taking what we know, how we know, not so much just anger, rage. I mean, that there's that stuff there, of course, but all that stuff's being moved out of the way to where now we could start being presented more and more with long-term beneficial action to come in more into a harmoniousness. Because when I'm looking at 26 to 28, I'm looking at all these deep down, hidden away secrets, mm -hmm. stuff that's been going on for millennia. It's not new. Yeah. Hitting the fan, hitting the fan, hitting the fan, hitting the yeah. media, hitting mm -hmm. the fan. Mm -hmm. And then humanity, one by one, but it's going more than one by one. I mean, if you really look at it, the, let's ask ourselves this question. How long has, whether it be African-Americans, whether it be women, uh, females, how long has all that gunk played out right. and then all of a sudden there's the Me Too movement? Right. There's the Black Lives Matter movement. And it doesn't just go to Black Lives Matter. It goes to Black Lives Matter, Asian Lives Matter, Indian Lives Matter, eventually all Lives Matter <laughs> movement. But did you see how quick that's been passing through Exposure, 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 and then getting rid of the underground of it all to where now is forcing dear ones to act in more of a state of integrity, more of a state of equality. I'm not saying they're completely there by any means, but I'm saying we're well on our way and how it's been speeding up and speeding up. Now, that stuff's been going on for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. 
But look how quick that turn had taken place. Mm-hmm. So if you can envision that with everything, see, in the past, humanity would be like a bunch of, unfortunately, like scavengers, feeding off this, feeding off that, going in, you know, um, make love, not war, then it went to make war, not love, and all this stuff, the pendulum going back and forth, matriarchal, patriarchal, yeah. all that kind of stuff, to separations of culture, color, creed, separations from all this stuff. But look at how quick that turn's been being made. I mean, there's a lot more to do by all means. But you see how quick it came up in a shock? Then came the ex- exposure, the shock, then the settling, and now a redirection. Even where in the U.S., where... All these dear ones took it upon themselves to rush the Capitol a building and yeah. create all this chaos. Yeah. That's been a long time coming. Yeah. Now, gotcha. but, but how quick it happened, arose, exposure, now long-term beneficial change being created. I can't say we're totally there, but when I look at things getting back on track, I look at 26 to 28 for all these exposures to reach a peaking point. Mm-hmm. And then humanity as a whole, no longer, I'm an American, I'm from Japan or Canada or Australia. Now we're talking about getting rid of all those things for a moment. I, I'm not into one world government, so I just want to be clear on that. But it's more about all of our separation, segregations, identities are being poof, 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 poof. And now bringing it right back to the heart of, hey, I am love, you are love. Mm-hmm. Tell me about what you love in Australia. Tell me about your lifestyle, what you eat, whatever, whatever. And I'll share with mine. To where now it's coming more as a communion rather than adversities. Does that make sense, Karen? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. So would you say, getting back to the death thing, that all those people that don't want to come for this ride that what because what i see is that the human mind can be so stubborn like so fixed (laughs) so cemented cemented right when when coming to change paradigms and perspectives yeah so for those that just don't want to shift and change will will they just leave their body will they just they'll phase phase out of the physical they'll phase out of the physical so more death and then there'll be some phasing out because they'll want to renew their body. And then there'll be those going forward in their bodies, um, in their bodies. Uh, okay. So what about, I know Heidi, I see you've got your hand up. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to you. What about the, 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 the coronal ejection from the sun the, that people are talking about? Do you see that in our future, this sort of wiping out the grid, the, the magnetic, the, um, electrical grid? Do you see that? Is that something? I really, that- I really don't, sweetheart. Oh, you don't. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a relief. <laughs> as you got to remember as a whole, the critical mass has already been crossed. Enough to ones are awake. Okay. There's no, there's no going backwards. And that's, I hear all this stuff, but if you, if you kind of put it in perspective, it's like many are going around. They don't mean to, but doom and gloom and stuff like that. Like, Okay, now watch how everything explodes and all this fun stuff. Well, no, we're not looking at more suffering. We're coming out of suffering. Nice. Yeah, but but at the same time as we're coming out of suffering, we're still being exposed to where the disclosure of the suffering, the, the exposure of of crimes and secrecies and control and you know yeah, we're being exposed right. we're still being yeah. exposed to a lot of distortion that has been hidden yeah. and secret which you can suffer over or not i choose not to suffer over it but people do suffer over it especially when they see yeah. children being eaten and you know beheaded and sexual pedophilia blah 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 so um there's that yeah. that's it, it, you know there's that in store I, love yeah, it. You know, I would highly encourage everyone, you know, to look above and beyond the physical. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's not just about the carnal acts. Yep. It's about why and why did that soul, what is it within that, that dear one in front of you? And the, what, even from the victim to the victimizers, I mean, what is really going on there? Yeah. And that's where you'll start to see the truth beyond 
the emotions. But I, I see you not had her hand up. But then, then unfortunately, I have another appointment. Oh, you've got to go. Oh, you've got to go. Okay. But Heidi had Heidi. Did you did your question get answered? Sorry, darling. Okay. Pin. Pin. Oh, we're having a lot of having feedback. A lot of feedback. Um, let's um, make this let's make into, into the inoculations, procedures, whatever we want. You just repeat after me. I repolarize this vaccination, this toxicity, whatever it may be. I repolarize this to vibrate in perfect harmony with my body now, from a body taking only what's necessary for optimal health and well being and passing the rest through with doing no harm. And let's say within a half an hour. If I'm going into a medical procedure, okay, higher levels, greater levels, manifest levels, take command and take command of the ones that are going to be touching this body and doing anything to the body. Take command, steer them and journey them, steer their hands, steer their their thoughts, and also surround them and surround this body for my highest, best good and the highest, best good of all concern. Because you see, even when we repolarize things, you can even start to feel the energy coming out of your hands into the object. And as you're coming out of your hands into the object, you're literally changing the molecular structure of what's being put into your body, your system, or even surgical procedures. You're welcoming forth your entourage to come on in and take care of the, anyone's hands that are going to be on your physical package to be able to steer it and journey it with ease and grace and with love with the highest of potential outcomes. Yeah. And so it, is, so it is done. So it is done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, so Amazing. Much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, Thank you so, much. so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, William. It's been thank you, William. Thank you, William. It's so good to meet thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, William. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. for being here. Thank you, William. Peace, hang loose. <laughs> peace, peace, hang loose. Thank you, too. But, thank you so much. And and just remember, if you're uh, interested in more of who you are, why you're here, William does private sessions. I had a private session with William. And um, uh, yes, yes, it's uh, it's just as confusing as his teaching online, but you just got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> it's going beyond the mind into you to activate and amplify. Okay. We sure love you all. So thank you so, so much. Big love. Thank you, William. Have a great time.